Get up, get up, let me begin. This is CWSN. You ain't heard about us yet. Well, you better know now because it's the place that it all goes down on. Uh. Welcome back, everybody, to the TWSN YouTube channel. I'm your host, Daniel Alameda, here with my guy, Nader Asaf, and we're going to be breaking down the Sean O'Malley versus Peter Yan fight. If you're watching this right now, go comment down who you have in this fight. Also, go subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a lot of good content. And subscribe to our betting Patreon. We're making a lot of people money with our best betting picks. Link in the description. Go make yourself some money. But I've got one person winning this fight. Nader's got another. We're going to break it down. We want to hear who you guys got. But I'm going to start this off, Nader. I've got Sean O'Malley. I've got Sean O'Malley winning this fight. And it may be a shock to a lot of people. But I'll be honest, there's an actual legitimate path to victory for Sean O'Malley, and here it is. Nader, this is a 15 round or 15 minute fight. It's a three round fight. That's a huge thing for Sean O'Malley. If this was a five round fight, I'd be on the other side. I'd say Peter Yan is winning this. He has a championship okay. experience. It's a three round fight. We both know also Peter Yan is a more slow starter. We saw it in the Aljo fight. We saw it in Corey Sanhagen. In the first round of the Sanhagen fight. Sanhagen outstruck him 45 to 20. It's no disrespect to Peter Yan. It's just his way. He processes information. He gets a read on his de on the defense. He's a slow starter, and that bodes well for Sean O'Malley, right? Sean O'Malley is a faster starter. He, he likes to get, you know, his striking going quick, his kicking going quick. And that bodes well for him because, I, I'll be honest, the way I see this fight going, I won't make my prediction yet, but... I think Sean O'Malley's going to win by decision. I don't think he knocks him out. So if it's by decision and he gets the, the first round because of Jan slowly starting, all he has to do is win one of the next two rounds. So that's a huge factor, right? It being a three-round fight is huge. Also, Sean O'Malley can win this fight at range. That's huge, right? He's the longest fighter in this division outside of Corey Sandhagen. And that's how he wins. He's going to outpoint uh, Peter Jan. Jan is a monster in the clinch. We understand that. If he can keep it away from the clinch, fight at, at range, that's going to bode well for him. He's got a variety of leg kicks. So that's huge. And also, right, you, a lot of people like to say, well, Peter Jan can defend the leg kicks with him switching stances. Sean O'Malley can switch stances too. That That's the crazy thing, right? It, it, Sean O'Malley is able to – he's not going to let Peter Jan dictate the striking because of his stance. So that's huge, right? Sean O'Malley can switch stances as well. And also, Jan fights in a boxing stance, whether from southpaw or conventional. That puts a lot of pressure on his front leg, which Sean O'Malley has excellent leg kicks. So Sean O'Malley, fight at range, use your length. And the last point I'm going to kind of make is Sean O'Malley is an excellent counter puncher. He's an excellent counter puncher. A lot of people will tell you, you know, go look at his last fight against Pedro Munoz. There was no activity. It's because Pedro Munoz didn't come forward, and we both know Peter Yan is going to come forward, right? Peter Yan is going to take the fight to Sean O'Malley. And if he doesn't, that bodes well for Sean O'Malley. If Peter Yan, Yan wants to stay at range, wants to, you know, fight, doesn't want to engage, that bodes well for Sean O'Malley because he doesn't have to take that damage from the clinch. He doesn't have to engage, and he can outpoint. So, Nader, uh, my final official prediction is Sean O'Malley wins this by decision. He's going to outpoint Peter Yan. And he's going to win 29 to 28. So, Nader, w what do you say about Sean O'Malley winning by decision? It's not happening. That's what I have to say about <laughs> it. Let's just say that when Sean had his arguably the biggest fight of his career, it was the biggest fight of his career. He's facing a higher ranked guy. It was technically his second ranked opponent because Holly and Paiva, when he did fight him, was ranked number 15. But let's just talk. Sean choked up in a big fight. Yes, the whole counter puncher, the whole Pedro wasn't doing anything. Okay, when Jan goes up, he's going to match Jan. Jan's going to feel him out. So what, you just expect Sean to go out and be active while Jan's feeling him out? Sean matches what his opponent gives him. It also takes him a minute sometimes. Let's not act like Sean O'Malley is this guy that's going to jump on you right away with spinning back kicks and knees and punch you right in the face. I mean, it does happen. Let me say this. He did give a first-round knockout against Holly and Paiva, but... It did take him three rounds against Chris Matinho, a human punching bag with all due respect. It took him three rounds with Thomas Alameda. He it dropped him rounds two dropped other Alameda. But it still took him three rounds to finish him. Let's just say that. He's not always going to knock people out in the first round, Danny. And also, let's not act like Peter Yan just fought Corey Sanhagen like it was nothing. That dude 
5'11", like Sean O'Malley, has a 70-inch plus reach, like Sean O'Malley. And what happened? That was a competitive that was a competitive disaster for Corey Sanhagen. He, in my opinion, I believe it was a 49-46. It was like what people like to call a competitive shutout. Yes, Sanhagen was throwing, he was landing. But in the end, we all know who won that fight, and that was Piotr Jan. And as much as Sean O'Malley may switch stances, let's not act like his boxing stance, uh, Jan's boxing stance, doesn't come with great defense, which he yeah. showed against Aldo with his efficient yeah. switches. In both ways, conventional or southpaw, he's great defensively, and his leg checks are amazing. And let's not act like he's a better leg kicker, uh, that Sean's a better leg kicker than Piotr Jan. Piotr Jan, especially with how much damage Sean's taken to his legs in the last couple of years, you can never bet on that. And when we're really talking, Danny, Jan can work in three. He can work in three. He knows his situation. We've seen him do it before. Yes, he probably understood that, Corey Sanhagen, this is a championship fight, so I can take my time. I can process things out. And look, it ended up working. But on his come up, when he was a younger and less experienced fighter, we saw him take John Dotson three rounds and beat him by decision, which is actually good because it shows that he can win on points in three rounds. He beat Jimmy Rivera by decision. He beat Uriah Faber in three rounds. He's been he knows how to work with three rounds. He always has been a main event fighter. He wasn't rushed to the title. He took his time on a build up. So he understands that. What's your counter to that? Ah oh, man, I like I, I hear what you're saying. I'll, I'll and I'll be honest, if you're watching this, go comment down who you guys got. We want to Definitely. interact with you guys. We'll my biggest concern, my biggest concern, I'm not sitting up here saying Sean O'Malley's going to dominate. My biggest concern is Sean O'Malley's toughness. I'll be honest, right? I don't have the answer to that. You don't. The audience doesn't. That's for Sean O'Malley to answer. So it depends. This is going to be the first time we really see Sean O'Malley against or deal with some difficulty, deal with, you know, some adversity. Uh, Even the Cheeto fight, I'll be honest, he didn't face adversity on the feet. There wasn't. Against Peter Yan, he's going to face adversity. He's going to get kicked to the body hard. He's going to find himself in a clinch situation. How does he take those shots? How does he react? That's the question. That's the biggest question. So, And also another reason why I have it going to decision, Yan has never been knocked out in his career or in the UFC. I don't think that happens again. He took Corey Sandhagen's best shot. I don't think Sean O'Malley catches him clean. The reason why I'm, I'm confident in Sean O'Malley in a, is in a decision is because of all the ways that it can go in round one. If Peter Yan presses, Sean O'Malley is an excellent counter puncher that goes well for him. If he doesn't, if Peter Yan finds, you know, tries to take his time, Sean O'Malley will win at range. And his path to victory is winning by points. It's staying at range, outpointing Peter Yan. He, I assure you, Sean O'Malley will not be rushing to fight Peter Yan. If Peter Yan wants to stay on the outside fight, he will do that all day long. So I, I, I'll be honest, Peter Yon is the way more, you know, the better fighter in the clinch. If the fight goes to the ground, he probably has a little bit of an advantage. But I still think that Sean O'Malley can use his length, can use his switch stances, can use him fighting at range and win by decision. So that's my prediction. For my closing remarks, Daniel, I have to tell you two things. First of all, Peter Yon is, could might as well be the champion of this division. Yeah. Many people had him beating Aljo in their last fight, the rematch. It was a very close fight. I understand why they gave it to Aljo. Would I be it, but have been mad if they gave it to Peter Yan? Definitely not. It was very neck and neck. Could have gone either way. So essentially, we're fast tracking uh, Sean O'Malley to the essential champion of this division, a guy that's been champ and could be champ right now if it weren't for the judges' decisions. The best guy he's fought is the young the old punisher, Pedro Munoz, and in that it was a no contest where he lacked activity and the fight was getting booed. The best moment of the fight is when he mocked Pedro with a spinning pizzazz. Yeah. That was the best moment of the fight. And also, you're forgetting one huge thing, my friend. Peter Jan's elite wrestling against Sean O'Malley's unproven jiu-jitsu. We've seen this, oh, Sean O'Malley has great jiu-jitsu. He's, this. He's never proved it. We saw that Peter Jan took down the best grappler, one of the best grapplers the UFC's ever seen in Aljamain Sterling, seven times. And it wasn't even a full fight. Imagine what he could have kept doing if he didn't knee him in the head. Yeah. You don't know how Sean's going to react to that. There's the wrestling, there's the grappling aspect. And as you said, Peter's a lead in the clinch. So we just there's too many unsolved question marks for Sean. And there's too many things that Piotr Jan brings. Because he's a better striker, he's a better wrestler, he's better at everything, Daniel. We're going to come back to this video, and if you're still watching, go comment down who you guys got. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel, but we're going to come back to this video after Sean O'Malley outpoints him, after it's 
you know, kind of a, it, it, could be a boring, it could be a boring first round, but we're going to come back to this and see who's right. But Nader, thank you for always, you know, appreciate coming on it. here. And if you guys watch this, we appreciate you guys.